book of Genesis chapter 15. God's covenant with Abram. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Fear not, Abram, I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the hair of my house is Elizer of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold, you have given me no offspring, and a member of my household will be my hair. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, This man shall not be your hair. Your very own, your very own son shall be your hair. And he brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven and number the stars if you are able to number them. Then he said to him, So shall your offspring be. And he believed the Lord, and he counted it to him as righteousness. And he said to him, I am the Lord who brought you out from Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land to possess. But he said, O Lord God, how, how am I to know that I shall possess it? He said to him, Bring me a heifer three years old, a female goat three years old, a ram three years old, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. And he brought him all these, cut them in half, and laid each half over against the other. But he did not cut the birds in half. When the birds of prey came down on the carcasses, Abram drove them away. As the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell on Abram, and behold, dreadful and, dreadful and great darkness fell upon him. Then the Lord said to Abram, Know for certain that your offspring will be sojourners in a land that is not theirs, and will be servants there and they will be afflicted for four hundred years. But I, will, but I will bring judgment on the nation that they serve, and afterward they shall come out with great possessions. As for you, you shall go to your fathers in peace. You shall be buried in a good old age. And they shall come back here in the fourth generation, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet complete. When the sun had gone down and it was dark, behold, a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch passed between these pieces. On that day the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, To your offspring I give this land, from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates, the land of the Kenites, the Kenizzites, the Cadmonites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Rephaim, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Girgashites, and the Jebusites. So, I, I took notes before uh, reading through this, before recording my other video for today, right? So I'm just going to read through like these notes and give my thoughts because they highlight like what stuck out to me when I was reading it. Sorry, just need to wipe my nose there. So in the very in the very first verse, we hear that God promises that to Abram that he is like he is Abram's shield, right? And this Sort of stuck out to me as God is our shield. Oh, I'm gonna turn off that light really bright in this room now. It was a little bit dark beforehand, so that's why I had it on. So, after these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision Fear not, Abram, I am your shield, your reward shall be very great. So, God is our shield. God will protect us, He will take care of us, He is to be trusted, He is good, He will protect us. So when we go through life and we go through like these challenges where we think that it's over, right? Like no better way to put it. It's over. God will protect us. God will be there and he will be our shield. The next thing that I wrote down is verse four. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. This man shall not be your hair. Your very own son shall be your heir. Here we see that God has promised Abram a son. God has made a promise to Abram. And it gets fulfilled, well, fulfilled in the very next chapter in uh, Genesis 16. When Hagar, uh, the servant of Sarai, gives Abram a son. But I'm pretty sure like it goes in on how Sarai, like Abram's actual wife, also gives him a son. I could be wrong about that. I haven't, like it's been a while since I've read through Genesis, so I could be wrong with my information there. But either way, God has promised Abram a son. And as we know, God always fulfills his promise, so Abram will have a son. And when it is shown that Abram 
like has received his son then we will know that yeah the god like god is faithful god is god will fulfill his promise verse 6 and he believed the Lord, and he counted it to him as righteousness. Here we see that Abram has faith, which is a very key proponent of the Christian life. We need to have faith in God. If we don't have faith in God, then can we, be, like, we won't even be considered a Christian. We'd consider ourselves atheists. So having faith is a key proponent, and we see it even in like the beginnings in Genesis and all, that People have faith in God. Here we see that Abram has faith in God. And because of that faith, he was made essentially the forefather of Christianity. He was, it is through his descendants that we got to Jesus Christ. So we see that God has not only made a promise, but Abram has faith in that promise. Verse 13. Then the Lord said to Abram, Know for certain that your offspring will be sojourners in a land that is not theirs, and will be servants there, and they will be afflicted for 400 years. We see that Abram's offspring have been turned into slaves. We see this sort of pre-tells the story of the Israelites being stuck in Egypt and being slaves. And we see that God is again making a promise that they will come out of that. They will come out of that slavery and they will be given great possessions. And another note that I took down when I read through this, this mimics our slavery to sin. It is through, we are slaves to sin. That's just how it is. We were, well, we were slaves to sin until Jesus Christ. But we see that in the same way that Abram's offspring were slaves and then taken out of that slavery and given great possessions, we too will be taken out of slavery to sin and we will be given the fruits of the Spirit. And through the other notes that I've taken here of God always fulfilling his promise, Abram having faith, if we apply both of these, and also God is our shield, then freedom from slavery to sin is bound to come. We are bound to be free and to bear the fruit of the Spirit. So that's everything I have to say today. Thank you for watching, keep running when no one else is, and have a blessed day.